All right, so here we are, part four of the Muncie Tapes. Want to thank everybody for sticking around and watching parts one, two, and three. I also want to thank all those people who gave me a cup of coffee with the buy me coffee thing. That was really cool. I'll put some links up at the end of the video for that. But before I get into this video, I just wanted to stress one important thing. I use these paper gaskets that have beads on them, the sealant beads. I kind of designed these for the Muncie, all right? So it's very important that when you use these types of gaskets that you don't run them in really quick with an impact gun because you can actually blow the sealant through the paper and crack the gasket. So they're delicate, they work really well, but you must kind of bring things down gradually. So there's a little bit of a feel to doing that, just a quarter turn at a time till you get it nice and compressed, and eventually it'll set and lock in and give you your torque rating. But you don't want, again, just run them in with an impact gun because you will blow the sealant right through the gasket. So that's really the only important technical advice I have for this video. Please enjoy it. Please subscribe to my channel and share my videos if you haven't. Thank you so much for just taking the time out to watch parts one, two, and three. I hope Ford delivers what it has to do. Leave me some comments and thanks again. So this kind of requires some feel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the three, four synchronizer assembly and push it forward about halfway. I just don't want it so that the keys can pop out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drop this down into it. And you see how I'm holding it. And I want to get over the cluster here. And sometimes you might have to turn the gear train a little bit and then get it in place. Now, I don't have it down all the way, but I want to do is make sure that the ring is engaged in the 3-4 key. You see? Now you can use an old bell housing, an old case. Obviously I have a fixture so I don't break my back as much. But once you kind of got it seated where everything is good, your rings are and get it all locked into the keys, that's important. Then you could kind of get this whole thing home. To make sure that your reverse idler thrust washer hasn't moved and reverse idler is positioned correctly. I put the reverse gear back in here with the idler shaft as it was before. Now, normally you might not have one of these billet mid plates, so we're going to put in the counter shaft retaining bolt that's part of this custom deal. So before I install my new hardware, there are companies that manufacture correctly coded hardware. And if you're into that sort of thing, there you have to go online and check. But there are companies that do make correct coded hardware for restorations. So I've got this thread locking gel that I use, okay? And I put it on all the bolts so they're ready to go. And But what I'm going to first do is install the bolt that's going to retain the counter shaft to the mid plate. The bolt is a grade 8 T45 bit bolt. Very low profile. And we torque these down to 45 foot pounds. And that's going to lock the counter shaft right to the mid plate. It's never going to allow it to come forward or spin anymore. But if I use an iron mid plate, they're down to about 55 foot pounds. Make sure all my surfaces are clean. And I'll do the same thing I did with the other gasket. Just put a dab of this anaerobic gel in certain areas to hold the gasket in place. Now when you're using any type of printed gasket, whether it's the red lines for the transmissions or ones for intake manifolds, you have to torque down the matching components gradually. You cannot just slam it down with an impact gun because you will break the bead 
and crack the gasket. And what I do is, I don't know if you notice, is I'm putting it down, I'm putting some pressure on it so it locks in place. And then I'll wipe off any excess that may go inside the transmission of the adhesive. Uh, it's looking really sharp, huh? So what I've got here is the extension housing ready to go in place. I've got the reverse shifter shaft and fork held in with grease. The shifter shaft is protruding towards the outside, okay? And it's in the reverse position. And I'm going to do is lift this up like this with my finger underneath it. I can actually look through the hole on the top and catch the fork within the gear. Then I do that. Once I get it in there, I drop it down. It's that simple. Now these bolts get all torqued down to 30 foot-pounds. Unfortunately, my digital torque wrench broke. I like the digital wrenches better because you can actually bring it down gradually without having to set click settings. So what I'm going to do is just run these down this lightly. Now there's some people who think you need to have a yoke installed. You don't. The mid plate's job is to register the tail housing and register the tail housing to the center line, and then the tail housing is going to be registered to the mid plate. The mid plate is going to be registered to the main case. If you have a good mid plate and you have an accurate mid plate, there's no need to put a yoke in here and hold it in place while you're trying to bolt it down. Everything should line up perfectly if your clearances are correct. If your clearances are not correct, you're going to have problems and you should be using new parts anyway. Now what I'm simply going to do now is put this down to around, like say, 12 foot pounds, see, and work it around. This gives the printed uh, sealant time to spread out. Now, again, if you hit it with an impact gun really hard, the sealant is kind of like a gel. It's not going to react that fast. So as a result, then, it's going to blow itself through the gasket and you're going to crack it. So if you want to think of anything, that could be the, the bad portion about using a printed gasket. Is you can't just slam it down in one shot. I just check again. I'm bringing this is about 12 foot pounds right now. And we're going to shoot for 2530. Okay. It's looking really nice. Good. Now if there's any excess sealant, I'm going to clean it up on the outside. So if you're using regular gaskets with sealant, if you, whatever you do, nice professional touch is to always just wipe down the outside. It's amazing at how many supposedly pro rebuilders leave sealant leaking out all over the place. And it just leads to a very nice professional look and that's the way I think it should be done. A little extra time involved is no big deal. So now it's time to put in the tapered pin and I'm going to just put some sealant around the top of the pin. Then a little sealant into the bottom of the hole. I'm going to squish it in there. The pin will push it back out.
Now oftentimes, if I feel the pins are a little bit on the loose side, I'll just stake the corners of the case slightly so it can't come out. Then using an adjustable wrench or something to grab the end of this, I'm going to make sure that it feels good, that the action is fine, that the pin isn't interfering with anything at all. And it feels good. So everything feels really good. It's spinning good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the front nut on. But before I do that, I have to put it in gear first. So I slide it in gear in second gear. And then usually reverse gear. So I lock it in two gears at once. So I can put the nut on. Now the nut is going to require a special wrench. I have these wrenches for sale, but this wrench is pretty beat up, my old wrench. And it's the uh, best way I can explain it. I've had this thing for years, beating the hell out of it. It's never failed me. So you can use it to take nuts on and off, but most of the times I take nuts off with a, a chisel. It's a lot faster. But it's made by Victory, made in the USA. It's a good piece, okay? So the nut's a left-hand threaded nut. And what I do is I just take some of that gel thread locker and I put it on the thread. Just a dab. If you have a hole in the input shaft, some old inputs have it, I put it opposite of the hole so the stuff doesn't end up in the hole. Again, it's a left-hand thread so it kind of goes on backwards than normal you know, nuts, all right? What we're going to do is we're going to get this off the fixture, put it on the bench, and whack this nut down in place. This uh, gel thread locker doesn't set up right away. So you can see that hole over here that I was talking about. What I'm going to do is just take the hammer and shock it tight. The thread locker is going to do its job. You'll see some people staking the, the nut over here in place. But I've been doing it this way with the thread locker in place. It works fine. There's no need to stake anything or damage the, the gland nut. This is actually your front seal. So what happens is the tolerance of this slight angle combined with the left-hand thread is what pumps the oil back while the unit's rotating. So if I put this the way it is in second gear, the thread is going this way and it acts as a pump and pulls the oil around. So if you have a bad pilot bushing, which can move it like this, let's say, and then you have uh, no alignment in the back, you're not going to get a concentric seal around the front retainer of the transmission. So it's important that everything is dialed in correctly. Any of the good gaskets that's come with two different types of retainer gaskets, one that's 15,000 thick and one that's 30,000 thick. And the proper way to determine the correct clearance is very simple. Put the retainer on without a gasket. See if you can put in the 15 thousandths gasket. And I can't, okay? I actually have a clean 15 thousandths gasket. And if I put pressure on it, I can't. So I'm going to use the 15 thousandths gasket. Now, for example, say the retainer ended up being this high and I could slide a gasket in like this. Then I would go with the next step up the thicker gasket so we're going to put the thinnest gasket on this one because it fits good locks in good so i put the bolts into the lock plates i'm going to just put some more sealant on these bolts here i use the anaerobic gel again on the threads these aren't blind holes so the threads go right through the case so you can have oil leak through these holes out of the threads gaskets on there just like i did the other ones I'm putting it in place Making sure, by the way, that the return feed is lined up over here towards the bottom. The short strap goes to the bottom. The longer strap, the two different size straps, goes towards the top. When you have the bolts in the straps, it'll almost be impossible for you to get in any other way because the straps won't allow the bolts to go in because one strap is longer, one strap is shorter. What I did was I took the socket and I actually ground a chamfer in the socket so it doesn't 
push the, the tangs down too far. I torque these down to 25 foot pounds as well. Now alternate side to side and again bring it down gradually because these are the printed gaskets on here and you don't want to again blow the bead through the gasket. Just bring it down little by little. And one thing I want to point out is that factory Muncie's are pretty sloppy. They're not like Super T10s. So look how much movement I have in this, all right? You wouldn't think it would be like that, but it is. And that's because everything floats. I'm, I'm pushing the output shaft up and down right now, and look what happens. Once you put a yoke inside the back of the unit, and you put a pilot bushing in it, it's not going to move around as much. But they all are like this. They're pretty sloppy. The newer cases, everything is a little bit better tolerance. You could use a simple pair of pliers to bend the tangs up. I bend both tangs on each bolt up to lock it in place. That looks nice. All done in the front. It's good to be outside. So I'm interrupting this video, okay, so that I can give you this special offer. Thank you so much if you got made it this far watching Muncie Tapes parts one, two, three, and four. So what I'm gonna do for you is if you want my two books, I'm gonna give you a super deal of my two books for $49.95 plus free shipping. That's way less than what Amazon charges for both books. I think currently right now they're about $29.95 a piece, okay? So $49.95 plus free shipping is a great deal. I'll even autograph them for you and throw in some swag if I have it, okay? So thank you so much for watching my series. I appreciate it. This is the best I could do for you. The book deal is going to be limited because I don't know how much the publisher is going to keep this thing going for me. It's a kind of special deal I worked out with the publisher. Thank you so much. What I usually like to do as a finishing touch is I'll put some JB Weld or Permatex Cold Weld Epoxy it's kind of both the same over the pinhole because some of these holes get stretched over time and this prevents any oil from leaking out of it. If you need to pull the unit apart, a little heat will just melt this away and you can knock the pin out. But I just like to put a little bit of cold weld epoxy around it so that nothing can leak out. All right, so almost done with this transmission. What we're gonna do is put that speedometer fitting in place using the blue gear for this guy's application. I'm greasing the fitting and I'm placing it in the hole there and put a brand new hole down and bolt. Now these hole downs that I use have the correct thickness for the slot. A lot of ones are too thin and they'll allow the fitting to move in and out. So this fits in the slot as it should fit with no end play. I don't really torque these down, okay? I just do this by feel. It's just got to be tight. And that's good. And I do is I just spin it, make sure that I could see that it's spinning around, that it's moving, that there's no issues at all. all right, I've also obviously put the cover gasket in place. I've pre-lubed the gears. I put some lubricant on them. It's just a question of just the oil that you're going to use like a GL4 type of oil. I just put it on everything inside here, squirt it in. Everything feels really nice and smooth in this transmission. So I've got the transmission still in second gear. That's how it's going to go together. We're going to put the shift forks in the cover. So I want to do is I want to grease the inside of the cover cams so they're not running dry against the forks. All right. 
So you just want to put them in the cover. And you want to have this cover in second gear as well, like this, and then drop it into the transmission, making sure everything's aligned properly. There you go. I put thread locker on all the cover bolts. These were going to get torqued down to 18 foot pounds. Same thing, you've got a printed gasket on this, so you want to bring things down gradually. You might just do maybe a quarter return at a time. And because the bolts are actually odd, in other words, the seven bolts, you could start at one and skip over each one, and you'll basically go through the whole pattern. Watch again. I've got this one here, skip over that one, skip over that one. Skip over that one. See? Then you're back to this one here again. And I'm keeping on doing this until it's actually torquing down. Then you can go through each one. So I'm really happy with the result of that transmission build. I really like the look of that billet aluminum mid plate, the way that kind of has a high tech look to it, but still has the old nostalgic look of the Muncie four speed. I really like that aesthetic that you got a little bit of the new and a little bit of the old, right? I also built a brand new Hurst shifter for this transmission with my heavy duty tool steel bushings and heavy duty spring clips for it. And I set that whole thing up and shipped it out. So it's all gone, ready to go. And I want to thank you guys very much for watching all the series, parts one, two, three, and four of the Muncie tapes. And for those people who also gave me those little donations with buy me a coffee, uh, I get a lot of requests from people always asking to buy me a cup of coffee. And now you can with these links that I just have over here. And that's it. So thanks so much again for watching my videos. Please share them and subscribe. I got some really great stuff coming up soon, so please stay tuned. And that's why you need to hit that notification button, okay? Thank you.